Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week we're in the East Central section. We're looking for snapper, cobia, and triple tail. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forms for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week we're fishing with Mark Wilson, aka Doc Wagers from the East Central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We're heading out of Cape Canaveral. We're looking for triple tail, cobia, and snapper. He's taking the line. Look how beautiful that fish is. Look at that color. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. This is my first time out of Port Canaveral. This area is well known for its cruise ships with a proximity to Orlando. It's a great jump off destination for these, you know, these big boats to go out to the Caribbean. You know, but we're here for a different reason. This area is well known for certain fisheries. The red snapper, the cobia, and the triple tail are great up here and these guys have it dialed in. All right, East Central section, Florida Sportsman Forum. Mark Wilson, AKA Doc Wages. Going out of Canaveral here, Canaveral Port. Yeah, Port Canaveral. What do you got planned? We got, um, a buoy line out here, we're going to look at some triple tail first off. Then after we work the buoy line, we're going to get out a little further and uh, look for um, in 55 feet of water, look for some weeds, debris, and look for some free swimming cobia. And um, hopefully later today, the manta rays will pop up. They've been popping up late around here, around 2.45, 3 o'clock. All right. So we got a long day in front of us, and uh, hopefully we'll get some nice fish. You also have a some, uh, good snapper population too, maybe we we'll give it a try? Yeah, what happened is, um, you know, the cobia, since it's kind of a wacky season this year, you know, because the weather's been off, the rays haven't really shown up, so we've had to resort to jigging off the bottom for cobia. You know, in cobia, cobia season, cobia's a bottom fish, and what's unique about it is it's a bottom fish you can sight fish for. But lately, we've been having to get out in the 55, 65 feet and just jig off the bottom and catch whatever we can, bring it up, and the cobia's been coming up with it, because the rays aren't around bringing them up right now. It's pretty so, bad when you got to catch nice red snapper to bring to Cobia. So because of snapper band, <laughs> you can't keep snapper. They're out here like cockroaches. So uh, you know, we're we'll catching some nice snapper, bringing them up, and the Cobia coming up behind it. So when we get out to 55, 65 feet of water, we'll throw some jigs down, see if there's some snapper at home, and hopefully they'll bring some friends with them. Well, we got a pretty morning. Let's get out there. Heading out of the port, there is a lot to see here. You know, on one side, you have these giant cruise ships. You know, they, you have these small marinas with private vessels. You have a naval base, a submarine base. You know, and you have these long liners, commercial fishermen, so it's a pretty interesting place to take off out of. Our first stop of the morning is on some of these channel markers outside of the port. You know, and this is more of a first come, first serve basis, Mark is saying. You want to be the first guy out here, and the main targets out here are triple tail and cobia. Uh, so just a quick half mile out here, hitting these buoys, you saying, on the way out? Yeah, this is a buoy line. Uh, we got a whole set of cans going out here, about uh, four or five miles, and um, we're gonna hit each one of these here on the, and uh, just drop a shrimp down there and see if there's any triple tail down below. So Later just, on, we'll be sight fishing for them, but uh, right now, if they're out here in the, in the low sun, they're gonna be down low. So it's just a shrimp on a jig head? Shrimp on a jig head, pinch the tail. I usually snail it right in the back like that. Gives a nice live effect down there. If it's not a triple tail, it's probably gonna be some bait fish down there. If we get one of them, we'll throw them in the bait well for a finicky cobia later. All right. Mark's throwing a live shrimp. I'm gonna put this gulp, three inch gulp shrimp on a jig head. Great thing about this is, you know, the little critters have a hard time getting it off the hook. It works just as well, so see if Triple Tail wants that. We bounced around on some of the channel markers. We got some small blue fish and a couple other crater bites. Not what we were looking for, so we continued on. So nothing going on the cans? Push off? Yep, let's push off. Nothing but just little toothy critters there. Um, since it's still too early to start sight fishing with this weather like this, we're already out here in 50 feet of water. We're gonna bump out a little further to a little natural drop off and uh, just start jigging off the bottom and see if we can't bring something up that way. So our second stop was out to the 65 foot ledge and talking to Mark, this is the prime area for these genuine red snappers to hold on. It didn't take long at all and we were hooked up, you know, and I didn't have time to probably get the right rig out. I still had my small rod out that I was using for triple tail and I just took that jig with a gulp, threw it out there and I was already hooked up to a red snapper. Fish on? Yeah, I dropped that gulp down there. Nice. <laughs> And we're making some pretty good marks. Pulled up to this spot, Mark had fished. And, you know, before we even got set up, I had this rod and reel sitting in the rod hole, and this is what I was using for triple tail. Probably wasn't the smartest thing to grab, but. <laughs> they ate it. 
This is a nice snapper here? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Look at that on a gulp. On a gulp. Reach down and grab that boy. Oh, God, these things are tough. What a pretty, oh, there he went. What a pretty fish. Tied this on for the triple tail. The 3 8 ounce jig head, three inch gulp shrimp. I can't get it down 20 feet and no snapper and hailing it. This segment is brought to you by Trocar Hooks. The rules have changed. So we just slid out here to 65 foot depth. You said it's the ledge out here that's holding all these snapper? Yeah, there's a, um, we're, we're inside a, a public uh, reef number of 8A, but we're inside a little closer, a uh, little ledge out here. It doesn't look like much on the sounder, but um, there's a lot of snapper that hang out right here. So these snapper are pretty well regulated, huh? Yep, here we go, we got one. Obviously there's a shortage of them. Yeah, there's a shortage of them. <laughs> yeah, so these snapper, man, tell you what, they're, they're all over around here. Um, they got a ban on them right now for 35 years. All right, I'll bring this guy up. 35 years. 35 years. Their philosophy is, their thought process is, if we stop fishing for snapper for one generation, then they'll be here for our next generation. But myself, I'm a third generation fisherman. My dad taught me to fish. His dad taught him how to fish. And if I can't fish for these guys, then my son's not gonna know how to fish for them. But uh, they're beautiful fish. Excellent. They're in abundance. And uh, we're gonna catch some more. We'll catch them on artificials. We're not even using live bait or dead bait. Um, when, they're, when, they're, when they're getting on these Berkeley gulps, and th you know they're that thick when you can catch them on artificials. Genuine red snapper is a highly sought after commercial and recreational bottom fish. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding this. You know, right now they have the season completely closed. And a lot of guys feel like there's plenty of fish around. Others feel like the, you know, the fish population just can't sustain this type of fishing. Just, you know, the fish are getting smaller. So today is just going to be catch and release, and I guess I can formulate my own opinion after seeing this fishery. So George, I think one of the reasons we have so many snapper around here is because of the geographical layout of this area. If you look like down south Florida, the Gulf Stream is real close to Florida. So once you leave an inlet or port there, you guys go out, what, three or four or five miles, you're in deep water already. Yeah. Out here, we're out, we got about 10, 12, 15 miles, um, and just so spread out, you've got a lot more shallower area out here. You've got a lot of wrecks from World War II. You've got uh, a lot of debris that's come out here and been sank from uh, Kenny Space Center when they take down towers. So you have so much more real estate out here before you get to the Gulf Stream, because the Gulf Stream is really like 20 miles out right here. Oh, wow. So all that land, all that real estate, just gives snappers places to live and thrive and grow. So we're on a good little spot right here, but uh, my buddy might have a number, you know, a quarter mile down here, it might be just as hot. So they're all up and down these ledges, oh, all up and down that. the rock piles. And there you go, got another nice snapper on. <sighs> He's taking the line. <laughs> Love the sound of that. <laughs> oh man, it is fun on this light tackle. These are all about cookie cutter size. Yeah. How big do they get? Oh man, the, you're, you're catching these cookie cutters all day long, all of a sudden one big mother will come up. Oh, here we go. That's not a bad one. That's a nice one. Let me just head this way, head this way. All right, we got them. There we go. All right, I finally put one in the boat. So after I shook a couple off both sides, Mark put one in the boat so we can take a closer look at one of these fish. Oh, that is nice. That's look at a pretty fish. Belly on that thing. Oh God, it kills you to release those. That is some good eat right there. Look how beautiful that fish is. Look at that color. Look at the jigs perfectly hooked right here on the bottom right there. <laughs> <laughs> like that gulp. They love that gulp. Heart, that colors on that thing is incredible. God, look at that mouth too. Capable of eating just about anything you throw down there. Down it goes. We're getting them so high, I'm getting them 20 feet down. So there's real, really no reason to vent these fish. They're coming high up in the water column. They're going right back down to the bottom. So this is a popular takeoff spot for cruise lines. Yeah, it's a huge cruise port. I guess um, the proximity to Orlando. Proximity to Orlando. It's the second largest uh, cruise port destination um, departure next to Miami. Oh, wow. They've got uh, three major lines that run out of here and plus destination cruises come in here. 
So it's a real good, uh, you know, departing departing port to uh, the Bahamas and Caribbean. God, and, and apparently there's a shortage of these snapper. How could that be? They're endangered. Uh, they're a protected species because they are a highly endangered species. They don't seem too endangered out here. Oh. <laughs> don't grab the trout rod. How far down were you when you I'm literally them? 20 feet down. These fish are not even coming off the bottom. I got a like a three ounce jig head. Not even getting to the bottom of the water column. That Ray Marine is marking them all the way up on the water column. And that gulp shrimp. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose another one. Oh, I can just see it now. Ah, oh, did I just say I was gonna lose another one? Maybe I should get the net out. See, when he's net next time? <sighs> nah, just yeah. No, yeah. So I really didn't have a problem, you know, hooking these fish, um, getting them in the boat. I guess I should have got the net out, but a little boat side release never hurt anybody. This segment brought to you by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. So we caught a handful of these genuine red snapper. You know, I've caught them maybe once or twice before, so it was nice to, you know, get the bend in the rod, get the skunk off the boat first thing. But, you know, we're gonna decide, since it's catch and release, season's closed, let's leave this fishery and head over and look for some cobia. We're at the beginning of the cobia season up here in the east central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum and talking to Mark, he says this kind of coincides with the migration of the manta rays that are coming through as well. You know, these fish have a tendency to, you know, hang on some bottom structure, they hang on sharks, they hang on rays. So there's a lot of different ways that you can target these fish. Um, recently though, he's been seeing some rays, catching them on rays, but he's also been getting them on some artificial bottom numbers as well. So we're just trying to get our bearings on this artificial reef, you know, looking at the bottom structure, make sure we get it positioned well. But you, wouldn't you know it, immediately two cobia swim up to the boat. I got a small cobra remora, I'm gonna wrench him up. Uh. Little cove. No, I got a little cove. Man, that one just shot up. That's a big ass, he, 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 he followed my, my, my jig up. Didn't want anything to do with my jig. Mark hooks up to a small cobia. There's another bigger one with him. I dropped my jig to him. Unfortunately, I couldn't get him to eat. You got him? All right, nice little guy. We'll let him go. So I made a little move, another artificial spot. No, actually this is a, yeah, this is a wreck. It's called the Dutch wreck. We're sitting right outside the VAB building. You can see back in the distance back over there. And this is an old wreck that's been broken up into about four pieces. And uh, right now they're holding cobia. We put one, caught one already, shook another one, and uh, I think it's gonna be game on here. This is how you typically fish for them here? Yeah, early season when you fish on wrecks, because we actually have a resident population of Kobe that live here and can fish year-round. And they're always on structure on the bottom, because keep in mind, they're bottom fish that uh, only this time of year you can actually sight fish for them. So this is a typical way of fishing for them. Until the rays come up, then you start chasing rays and looking for free swimmers. And mainly throwing jigs at them? Mainly jigs. But you got to be prepared to mix it up, because by the time the rays get up here from South Florida, the fish that are left that had fed so many jigs thrown at them, <laughs> <laughs> they start to get a little smart. So you gotta mix up sometimes some crabs, sometimes some live bait. But for the most part, I use a, a jig and I use a, uh, a power bait Berkeley worm on there, the 10 incher. So we're making perfect drifts across this structure, we're just motoring up, drifting back, dropping jigs down. One of those drifts, I get the bite. I just drop that jig down, jigging it up. He followed it up. <sighs> That gaff, Mark, why don't you get that gaff out, get it ready. If it looks like he's a keeper, we just throw him in the Yeti. I was jigging. Oh, he's off. No. All right, we'll get another one. We'll get another one. So I lose that fish, but so often is the case when you're cobia fishing with jigs. You know, you got a two ounce jig dangling there. They shake their head so violently that, you know, it, more often than not, you pull them off. So I'm staying with the jig, you know, drifting the structure. It doesn't take long. I get another bite. I actually watch this fish follow the jig up and eat it next to the boat. He's gonna come up quick. 
He's right here. Is he gappable? Maybe, maybe net him. What do you think? Ah, uh, it's marginal. You know, when you get these fish alongside the boat, you have to make the decision whether you're going to get the net out or the gaff. And let me tell you, if it's anywhere close, you want to get the net out. You don't want to be sticking fish that are too short. You don't want to gaff these fish if they're questionable with 33 inch. Oh, this oh. is scary. Get him closer, get him closer. Oh, we got him. You don't want to gaff them because they're 33 inch to the, to the fork. This one's a little close, so it's better to carry a big net with you. He looks like he might keep though. Let me, let me rack this might. up. I think he might. When you measure fish, there's two ways to measure fish. One is total length. Total length, you pinch the fork and you're way out here. On these guys, you gotta go to the fork, so you're going to right here without pinching it. The shortest port point. So you're right here. He's 33, he's 32 and a half. So uh, he's a, he gets to live another day. A little short, 32 and a half. We're gonna let this one go. That's why you don't gap him. A half inch would have killed this fish for no reason. Grow up, buddy. We'll get you next season. Ah. I watched him follow that up, that, that jig. That up, was nice. And take that jig. That was nice. Not a keeper, but I'm happy All to right. get one. This segment is brought to you by Triton Boats by Earl Bentz. We take America fishing. In this week's tip, I'm gonna to talk to you about the bottom fishing rigs that we used here in the East Central section. Know that these are the same rigs that you can use throughout the whole state of Florida when you're bottom fishing. Start off with, you have your basic knocker rig. Your weight is on your leader, nothing's holding it, it slides all the way down to your hook. Now this, what this does is get your bait right down to the very bottom. The second setup that I'm going to talk to you about is the fish finder rig. This is really common. A lot of bottom fishermen guys use this. So you have your weight. It's up on your main line and it's held up there above the leader, typically either with a swivel. What I like to use is just a pinch weight to hold it up there. Then you have a section of leader. This depends on the type of fishing that you're doing. Um, when guys are mutton snapper fishing, they have leaders up to 40, 50 feet long. So think to yourself, this weight is down on the bottom, pegged on the bottom. If you have a long section of leader, then that bait can get up off the bottom and there are fish that are, you know, weary like mutton snapper, that long fluorocarbon leader, it's very effective to get the bite. Another one that's kind of like a hybrid between the two is just your weight is actually kind of looped on your line and you can adjust this. You can use it a smaller weight, put it the weight where you want it. It just holds that lead up a little bit above the hook. So a great quick way to put a little bit of weight on there to get it subsurface. The rig that we really used a lot here in the East Central section when looking for this Kobe is just a jig. You got a section of you know 60 pound fluorocarbon leader, you know one two ounce jig depending on the current and the depth of water. What we did is on the, on, the, on this jig we went ahead and put a Berkeley Gulp tail on there to add some scent, you know, and it helps with that cobia bite. And lastly, what I used when I was snapper fishing was just a small jig head, three eighths ounce jig head, light line. You know, dropping gulps down to the bottom, very effective for the red snapper fishing up here. So if you utilize any of these types of techniques for bottom fishing, I think you'll improve your chances of catching fish. So we're just sitting right on top of the wreck right now. I got a spot locked with the trolling motor. We're just throwing these jigs up a little up current. You kind of just popping it a half crank, popping it a half crank. You just want that jig to kind of pop up and fall down, right? And they're gonna eat that thing when it's falling so often. You don't wanna retrieve it up too quick. It's not like high speed jigging. You just kinda wanna pounce it, take a half a turn. They'll follow it right up. So you always wanna be watching your jig when you're bringing it up. So the cobia fishing slows down and we decide while we still have the light out, let's run back inside and let's look for the triple tail. So our plan was to head in to fish the buoys again, but running in, we find these big, massive mats of sargassum. Talking to Mark, he says these hold, you know, the triple tail just as well as the buoys. Running along this weed line, saw a couple triple tail here. Gonna give him a shot and try to pick one up. So seeing these fish in the sargassum is not an easy chore. You know, you gotta be on the bow, you gotta be ready to fire your shrimp right on top of their heads. Oh. <laughs> you knew yes. we were going to come across nice. one. Persistence. Perseverance. Came up and ate that bait like it was nothing. Turned right on it. Whew. I mean, look at the colors. I mean, so hard to see. If you're not just poking along, 
he doesn't look like a piece of sargassum right now, nothing in this ocean does. Look at that. Yeah, you can see the coloring. The, you can see how the three tails go together. Oh uh, yeah. The little trocar 1-0 did the trick. Look at that little baby J hook. Nice little fish. How big do these have to be? 15 inches. 15, so he's short. He's gonna grow up. They get a lot bigger than this out here, but I tell you, fun to catch. Look at the mouth, almost a mouth like a brim. Well, they, you notice when you're fighting them, he turns sideways. Yeah. And when he turns sideways, man, they fight it's such, like such a bigger fish. Oh, how cool is that? Right back into his home. So I got my three targeted species. The light was getting low. The day was long, we decided to call it, head in and get some dinner. So we got dinner at Grill's restaurant right next to the boat ramp, and it was a great spot. Sit there, watch the cruise ships come in and out. You know, we sat there with Mark, had some drinks, reminisced of the day, and I'm tell you what, what a great guy to fish with. In this east central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, what an awesome destination. It was because of Mark's picks and posts that I chose him to fish with. I need your reports to continue, so I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. We'll let him go. Flip a rail! You're gonna flip a rail! Check the mic one, two. And today's. Three, two, one. Today's seminar, I'm gonna talk to you about the bottom fishing rigs that we used up here in the East Central section while we were fishing. Is that okay? Yeah, it's good.